Right. So, Hagrid was not involved in the Wars of the Roses. Now, this all stems from the King of England having far too many children. It's very confusing because everyone is related. Remember that, it's very important later. Now, it's not really the Wars of the Roses because there was no such thing as the Red Rose and the White Rose. That was made up by William Shakespeare. It was actually called the Cousins War. Why? Because there are too many children. Now we have King Henry VI. He's a bit rubbish because in 1453, King Henry VI hears that he's lost a war called the Hundred Years War. It's lasted 116 years. We've lost. What does he do when he hears the news? He falls over. He slips into a coma. He can't rule the country, but he has got a wife. Her name is Margaret of Anjou, played by Helena Bonham Carter. Margaret of Anjou is French. We've just lost the Hundred Years' War against France. Do you think we want a French queen on the throne? No. no. People hate her. She's what we call not very French. good. No, be quiet. So, who else can we have rule the country? Well, thankfully, King Edward III had too many children. So we have this man here. His name is Richard. Richard of York. And he also has a claim to the throne. So he decides he'll be the king. While the king can't rule the throne. Very good. But there's a problem. Margaret isn't very happy about that, and she's got herself an army. So we have war. It's called the War of the Roses, but it's nothing to do with roses. And there's another man called Richard Neville. He's the Earl of Warwick. He's green for some reason. Now, the Earl of Warwick, he originally supported that side, the Red Rose. We'll call it House Lancaster. But he decides he doesn't like Henry VI because he started stealing all of his land and his money. So Richard Neville, the Kingmaker, he swaps sides to the White Rose of York. But then there's a problem, because Richard of York, he gets killed in battle, and they take off his head, and they stick it on a spike on a wall. There he is. So, Richard of York, he's dead. And the crown goes to Henry VI. But Henry VI, he's not a very good king, because once again, He's fallen over. He's in a coma. He's unconscious. Everyone forgot that Richard Duke of York had a son. His name was Edward. Here's Edward. Now, Edward and Richard Neville, their cousins, it was called the Cousins War, they march down to London and they take the crown away from Henry VI. He's not even there at the time. He's up north in Scotland. And Richard Neville takes that crown and he gives it so little Edward. So now Edward is King Edward IV. Huzzah! Now Richard Neville, he is the king's right-hand man. Until he tells the king who to marry. So Richard Neville tells Edward IV to go and marry a French princess. He's not very happy about that because he wants to marry Elizabeth Woodville. And he does. Richard Neville's not very happy about that. He wanted him to marry someone from France. And to make everything worse, King Edward IV starts stealing all of Richard Neville's money and he gives it to his new wife, Elizabeth Woodville. So once again, Richard Neville, he swaps sides. So now he's supporting Henry VI. But Henry VI is in a coma. So he's actually supporting Margaret, the French chick. She can't mm -hmm. fall over. She's got to stand up. Right. So... 1469, Richard Neville captures Edward IV and locks him up at Warwick Castle, at the very top of Caesar's Tower, for about one week, because then he has to let him go. Edward IV, he runs out of the country and he gets himself an army. He comes back to England, Henry VI is in a coma over here, and then we have the Battle of Barnet, 1471. The battlefield is covered in fog. Now, Richard Neville, he thinks, it is a brilliant idea to split his army in half. Half of his men run off into the fog. They get a bit lost, they can't see where they're going, so they turn around and they bump into their own men and they all start fighting each other. Absolute chaos. When they realise what they're doing, they shout traitor and they all run away. Margaret isn't up there at the time, she's off on holiday. So Richard Neville, he's completely alone. He's captured by Edward's soldiers. They tackle him to the ground. 
they pull off his helmet and they stab him 60 times to the eye. He's dead. So Richard Neville's dead. Margaret Von Joux, she's captured. She's exiled off to France. Now, Edward IV, he's the King of England. What does the King of England do? He makes loads of babies. So he's got a daughter, her name's Elizabeth. And he's got a couple of sons. He's got Edward and Richard. He's got a nice little family going on there. But then, Edward IV, he dies from eating too much food. So Edward IV is dead. And his crown is meant to go to one of his children. But they're too little. So the crown goes to his brother. And his brother is called Richard. He's called Richard III. Now Richard III, he said the best place to put the two princes in, well, the two princes, is the Tower of London. So they go off to the Tower of London and they disappear. They're never seen again. So now Richard III, he's the King of England. But there's one more person. His name is Henry Tudor. Here he is. Henry Tudor pops up. He's with the Red Rose. He fights King Richard III. He kills him. He disappears into a car park. And Richard III, he's dead. Henry Tudor marries Elizabeth of York. They combine their houses, the Red Rose and the White Rose, and we have peace. The Tudor Age. The Wars of the Roses.